Welcome to Springtime Coldwell Banker Distinctive Property. Having just spent a week in Cabo San Lucas, I am hard charging it now back at work. Of course, I was working there too, like you all do on vacation. But we're back, we're happy, and that's actually why we work, right? Is to take some time off, go on vacation, enjoy yourself, and spend the fruits of your labor. Meanwhile, today I'm going to talk to you about caveat emptor. You probably learned that in your first year of real estate school. Let the buyer beware. That's caveat emptor, you, if you recall your classes, is a Latin expression used long time ago and very, very important today, especially in the field of real estate. Let the buyer beware is a well-settled legal principle that establishes the starting point in a real estate contract. To be simple, it expresses the common law contract concept that a buyer of real estate is responsible for thoroughly investigating the real estate that they are buying before closing. Of course, once a buyer is under contract to purchase a home or another real estate, the last thing they want to hear is beware. But it's essential that the Colorado Real Estate Licensee properly advises their clients on this important concept. I often see my licensees write as-is clauses in the additional provisions of the real estate contract. Typically, this as-is clause, clause is intended to express the agreement that the buyer doesn't expect the seller to do anything regarding inspections or any other repairs on the property. This as-is is usually put in on properties that they are really eager to get. The property is being sold as is. It sounds like a really convenient way for everybody to, to just be a nice, smooth closing. However, the every Colorado real estate contract is as is. If you'll read paragraph 10.2 of the Colorado real estate contract, it clearly states what the seller is conveying the property to the buyer is in an as is condition, where is and with all faults. Ironically, it's more explicit, explicit as is clause than most real estate licensees ever take time to write in additional provisions. And it's included in every single contract. If you want to put it in additional provisions, that's fine. But just please point out to your buyers that it's already in the contract. The Colorado Real Estate Commission has covered you there. But now going back to your buyers you need to explain to them to beware. Sure, they want they don't want to get any inspections. Eh, you need to tell them to beware. They're going to get what while the traditionally strict application of caveat emptor may have been softened by centuries of judicial interpretation and contract refi refinement, it's important for the Colorado real estate licensee, you, to inform their buyer clients that the starting point of every commission approved contract to buy and sell is that the property is being purchased as is, where is, and with all faults. If you, if you repeat this maybe three times to them, your chances of them coming back at you and say, why didn't you tell me about whatever it is they're going to complain to you about. Apart from any seller or broker disclosure obligations, the burden is exclusively on the buyer to perform all their inspections of the property thoroughly and with competent professionals. Caveat emptor may not be the only two words that your buyer wants to hear as they let enter into a legal real estate contract, but it's critical that they understand that the contract's starting point. If you don't make this impress on them that it let the buyer beware they could come back at you and say well he never told me that that my, my my agent didn't say that it would be my fault if something wasn't discovered now fortunately for your buyers they have a couple of important protections that mitigate some of the potential harm of entering into strict as is contracts those protections come forth and you know them both the disclosures and contingencies Unlike the potential harsh medieval application of the concept caveat umptor, the American legal theory is a bit kinder and gentler to a buyer. First, courts have generally imposed a duty on the seller to disclose the defects on the property 
which the seller has actual knowledge. And don't forget, if you're standing in the basement, you see a crack. You see a crack in the ceiling, you got to ask that seller. You have to disclose that. More importantly, the commission approved contract to buy and sell requires that the seller disclose in writing to the buyer any adverse material facts actually known by the seller as to the date of the contract. This requirement is contractual and obligates the seller to provide a written disclosure even if they have not contractually committed to delivering the commission approved seller's property disclosure form. I see very often where, where people haven't lived in the property, they're renting it out in Grand Junction or, or in Vail, they haven't been there for years, so they just don't want to do a seller's property disclosure. You need to explain to your sellers that they must provide anything that would be a material adverse fact. It's the obligation, and it's under license law. Another protection for the buyer against the harsh result of a true buyer beware perspective is the availability of many contingencies that the buyer has. Vast majority of them on, are on our 18 page, count them 18 page, contract to buy and sell. And it's utilized to offer a responsible buyer the opportunity to consider every aspect of the property that they have contract for purchased. That's why I highly encourage you to go over these contracts line by line, page by page. Don't just email somebody a contract and say sign it or you're going to be in, you, it's going to come back on you. In a fully completed contract, the buyer has the opportunity to subjectively consider the property's title records, insurance availability, association documents, seller disclosures, financing, appraisals, physical conditions, and whatever. In essence, the buyer has a contractual right to review and beware of everything relating to the property. If the buyer, through their thorough consideration of the property, determines that there is something objectionable, they have the right to cancel the contract or negotiate some other acceptable resolution with the seller. The important protections afforded by these contractual contingencies is yet another reason that a buyer should be very cautious before agreeing to waive any of the contingencies at the time of a contract. Caveat emptor, buyer beware. Please explain this to your buyers. Thank you so much. Have a great week. Bye now.